Hello guys, welcome to my channel. I hope everything is okay in your life. In this video you will find an updated version of series I prepared in the previous years. You are in luck for listening to the explanation because I felt the need to quickly discuss the content of the video. Each video will feature an interview with a class master about either the succession or awakening versions of a class. All videos including the older ones will be available in the playlist you see on the screen. You can find the link of the playlist in the pinned comment section. The purpose of this video series is to help you understand the basic role of the class within the game. I must clarify that it is not a deeply detailed guide. You will watch an interview in a conversational style aimed at answering the fundamental questions of those interested in playing a class. The class masters featured are experienced players who have dedicated thousands of hours to their class and to the Black Desert Online. You may recognize some and not the others, but unfamiliarity does not make them bad players. All the class masters mentioned have proven themselves in Black Desert Online world. Please be respectful when sharing your thoughts. Enjoy watching. Halt! For beyond the border lurks only death, and nothing you are searching for. Alas, one has already been devoured by the serpent.
Hello guys, welcome. Today's case is Ineros. Welcome Ineros, how are you? Hi guys, I'm doing really good. How about yourself? Thank you, thank you. Today we will talk about awakening Hashashin. Like a few days ago we talked about succession Hashashin. And today's guest is Ineros and we will talk about awakening Hashashin. So let's start our interview. May you please introduce yourself? Who are you? Where are you from? Which server are you playing at? Yeah, hi, hello. I'm Ineros. I'm from Mexico and I play on NA servers. Thank you. How did you find out of BDO and what caught your interest is to stay in BDO? I always loved MMORPGs and I mainly used to play on console, so there wasn't a huge selection of these games. BDO was one of those games that caught my attention and made me stay mostly for the community and the combat of the game. Which also, when I moved to PC, made me move without hesitation because I already loved the game. Thank you. Have you ever taken a break from playing BDO? If so, what motivated you to come back? Uh, when I reached Endgame Gear Score on console, I pretty much stopped playing the game to the point where I quit. However, when I moved to PC, I kind of threw myself more into the community and I revived my love for BDO. I'm not as active as I once used to be, but I still pretty much play the game every day. Thank you. How long have you been playing the class you are currently playing? Have you tried any other classes? I have been playing Hosh since its release in 2020 and I have tried other classes, everything from, you know, Kuno, Ninja, Dark Knight, to some of the newer classes like Sage, Wu, and Drag, but none of them really give me the feeling as Hosh. Although Scholar is almost up there for me, but Hosh has just been my brand butter since release. Thank you. So what sets the class you play apart from the other classes? What is a special thing of Awakening Hosh and what is, you know, what is the unique thing that draws your attention? The main thing being the style of Hosh. There's not many classes or even characters out there in video games that tend to use the aesthetic of sand and deserts, and I am a big fan of those, so Hosh became kind of my go-to class when I felt this aesthetic of him, as well as the community based around them. A lot of the community based around Hosh is really supportive, despite the class not being the greatest. A lot of people still encourage and try to help others, and it's something that I don't see in other classes, since other classes tend to gatekeep or exaggerate certain aspects of their classes. I think Haja's community is one of the things that made me really love the class. Thank you. Is your class evasion or damage reduction or both playable and why? Haj is both viable and evasion and DR. A lot of people think just because you have evasion, you need to run evasion in your passive, but that's not really the case. Haj, much like most evasion classes, you need at least 1250 evasion to make it work, which is towards the end game gear. It's a viable aspect for PvP. However, DR tends to just be better in almost every situation for both Succession and Awakening. Since Hosh does struggle a bit with accuracy and burst damage, DR tends to solve that problem for both PvE and PvP. Thank you. So what is your current gear score? Do you rush your gear progress or you just take it easy type of guy? At the moment, I do have a 700 gear score account on console, but currently on PCNA, I am 670 gear score. I usually tend not to rush my gear since I know my RNG isn't the best. So I take my time grinding out the silver to buy things, that way I don't burn myself out. They did implement the new pay system for enhancing, which makes me kind of excited to grind for dev or records, since it's more realistic for me to grind them now with the pay system. Thank you. Is your class newbie friendly? On a scale of 1 to 10, how would you rate its difficulty? If you want, you can separate and compare it in Succession and Awaken. I wouldn't say Hosh is necessarily hard, but it's definitely not a class I recommend to someone who's new to BDO. Once you understand the basics of BDO, I think the class is relatively easy to use and have fun, but there's still some mechanics with Hosh that can be confusing. All classes are kind of hard to master, but if you want to be a good Hosh, you can manage all aspects of the game. I would say on a scale from 1 through 10, Awakening's probably on a 7 through 8, while Succession's more on a 5 through 6 on the difficulty scale. Thank you. So we talk in the general basics of the Awakening Ashashin. Let's dive in. We are curious about your thoughts on the PV situation of Awakening Ashashin. Could you provide us with detailed information separately for early, mid, and end game? So Awakening Ash for the early game, he is not the greatest for three reasons specifically. One being Hosh Awakening Hosh is a combo class, relying a lot on your other skills to pre-buff in order to do damage. In early areas of the spot where you're one or two shine packs, he falls short due to the fact that he has long cooldowns and doesn't really get his damage out. Second reason being his stamina isn't the great, especially to near players that don't know how to manage his stamina well. He tends to fall short and not be able to perform as well as other classes moving pack to pack. 
The third reason why Awakening Hash isn't so great on early game spots is due to the sustain of both HP and mana. Uh, Hash just doesn't have really great recovery skills when it comes to it, and those that he does have are skills that need mobs that have HP. One shine or two shine packs tend to leave you with no mana or HP which can make it really difficult to actually grind spots where you require the mana. So it's kind of difficult early on for Awakening Hosh. It's kind of just you have to power through the spots. I do recommend to stay around Kartuga or work on your infinite pot early on because you're not really going to be able to compete with other classes. For the mid-tier grind spots or mid-game for Hosh, he does improve quite significantly. The early to mid, he still suffers a bit due to the fact that one his sustain isn't so great when it comes to hp recovery two he really doesn't have that many frontal guards he has three frontal guards in his kit whether you're in succession or awakening and three the problem is most of your skills are sa meaning you'll probably end up tanking more damage than you should and early on when you're in areas like trolls or zakriya or jade these mobs can hurt and kill you meaning it's very difficult because you have to keep track of what you're doing and stay alert, which is not exactly ideal for some people. However, towards the mid to late, when you're reaching the more 290 spots where you have got underground guy fans and Olans, Hosh tends to do a lot more in these spots due to the fact that he's a combo heavy class, allowing you to fully see the DPS that he can do and being able to pull really great numbers, making Hosh more enjoyable towards this stage of the game. For the late game, Hosh sees a massive improvement when it comes to damage due to the fact that most spots like like Dekia Thornwood, you are able to just stand there and throw out your entire combo rotation. This combo rotation, you will see everything from the debuffs and buffs that you apply to yourself and realize how different it can be due to the attack speed and crit that you get since you don't really get to see a performance with other areas in the game since you're not allowed to fully maximize your DPS rotation. So Hosh really excels in this late game area where he's pulling really good trash. However, he does still suffer from the sustain, which can be rough in some spots and some spots do tend to have a one shot mechanic. And without having too much frontal guards or room to mess up, Hosh can be difficult for some people in the late game areas. But overall, he's still a really good class for end game spots. And I'll, I'll definitely recommend saying try him out if you want to have a fun, fast class that can still put great numbers. Thank you so much. Those were pretty detailed and you know what? I enlightened, not gonna lie. So let's talk about PvP. We are curious about your thoughts on the PvP situation of Awakening Ashashin. I think it will be a little bit detailed. Could you provide us with the detailed information separately for 1v1, 1v1, AOS, 5v5, Weird League, Node, Siege, and War of the Roses? Yeah, so small scale being anything from 1v1, 1vx, and AOS. 5v5 and Guild League do fit in this category, but I want to be more specific with these three. So 1v1, 1vx, and AOS. Hosh is a monster when it comes to these areas of the game. Because one, he has a great engage and disengage. He has mid-range CC and a range grab. And the combo class heavy allows you to deal massive damage to people, even if you have less gear score. Or even when you don't have as much HP in a situation like AOS where your gear is capped. This area of the game just allows Hosh to shine really well. And pretty much to show off what the class can do as far as it comes with the combo, with the movement, and the fact that you can just CC people. This shows Hosh being a really great skirmisher class. Allowing you to win majority of the 1v1s and you should have a problem with. However, when it comes to 5v5 and Guild League, uh, still on the small scale, Hosh still does great in these areas of pvp however he is more focused on prioritizing targets rather than just killing whoever going for the backline is obviously the thing as a rat class that is your job however hosh can manage really well going to to against classes like drag circuit or wusa he is a great class to shut down other classes and just counteract them due to the fact that he just has so much as kit to counterplay other classes with however the things that make him really great for small scale make him really bad for large scale. The fact that, you know, your combo, sure, you can kill whoever with low AP due to your combo being really great. Majority of your combo is still unprotected, meaning that there is plenty of chances for you to get CC if there is another person nearby. And two, the other thing that makes it is you have so much stuff in your kit to counteract. However, it is hard to counterplay certain people whenever there is multiple of them. 
you might get a CC or two, but being able to follow up or keep going tends to be difficult. Hosh also does not have many iframes and frontal guards. Hosh only has three frontal guards and three iframes. And one of those iframes is consistent while the other two are a minimum cooldown of 10 seconds. This means that most of Hosh's protections are SA. I mean, he's going to take damage for the majority of the part while he's moving, while he's casting, anything he's doing, he's taking damage. In large scale, this is really difficult for him due to the fact that certain classes like Track and Musa are really deal massive damage. So adding a few other classes on top of that makes Hosh pretty squishy and tends to be more of an assassin playstyle, even though Awakening's kit tends to be more of a skirmisher. Thank you so much. So, is there a significant strong aspect of the class you're playing, or significant weakness? In other words, strongest thing and the weakest thing for you. So, the biggest strength of Awakening Hush has to definitely be the grab. A ranged grab that can be cancelled in and out in case of missing it. It just pretty much allows you to fight any class and come out on top of. And it's really difficult to predict due to the fast movement of Hush. However, Hush is Definitely's biggest weakness is a sustain. Going back again to the fact that majority of his protections are super armored, Hosh tends to take a ton of damage. However, he doesn't have anything to counteract that, meaning he doesn't have a good heal, he doesn't have good evasion to actually be able to lift through most of this damage he's taking. Thank you. Are there any classes that clearly dominate the class you're playing? In other words, the counter matchups? And also, can you counter other classes? Which are they? As far as Calder matches, the main class that comes to mind is Tamer. Tamer is able to sit in an iframe and deal damage, putting pressure on top of a Hosh. And since Hosh is mostly SA, he cannot really dodge that damage, so he has to sit there and take it. Not to mention, Tamer has a really great grab, meaning the majority of the SA that Hosh is sitting in, he can just get grabbed out of. And the worst part, and possibly the worst thing that can happen to a Hosh, is whenever you do get the CC on the Tamer, her dog or someone can still CC you, helping her get up. This tends to be a really hard counter to Hosh, especially in a large scale where you CC somebody as being a tamer and you get CC by a dog. It tends to pretty much just mean you have to V or you are going to die. So as far as that goes, counter match. The only other one that will come to mind is Striker and Mystic. They are just tanky classes. Hosh does not do well against those two classes as far as damage goes. He will still be able to outplay them and outperform them in many cases, but when it comes to actually killing those classes, he struggles quite a bit. Countering other classes, Hasashin is a really great rat class, so any range class as far as ranger or archer go, a wizard, he is really good for. The main class that Hosh is meant to counter are forward guard classes, so something like a Awakening Zerk or even Drak or Wusa. Hosh is a great counter too. I get it. I mean, I don't understand why they just gave the magic damage to Hashashin. I don't know the lore. Is that related with the lore or they just wanted to do that? Technically speaking, Hosh is magic damage due to the sand. Unlike Musa where he uses rage that's considered physical. And same thing with Lan. They enhance their moves. While the Hosh is considered a caster just due to the fact that his sand is a entity of its own. Like the summoning tornadoes and stuff is a whole different thing, so that is considered magic, at least to PA. I agree that I think Hosh should be physical and not magical, but I can't do much about that. Okay, so is there a mechanic or skill in your skill kit, in your class, that you would like to be buffed or nerfed? Awakening Hosh can benefit from two main things. Really obvious one that I went over so many times is sustain. Whether it's more healing, more evasion, more frontal guards, it doesn't really matter what you want to give him. The thing is, he is lacking sustain. Due to the fact that Awakening Hosh is supposed to be a skirmisher and he really doesn't have anything to skirmish with outside of the fact that he is just a really great class to CC somebody with. But he cannot take any damage, he cannot trade any damage. And this also goes for PvE where he can't really sit there in front of a mob because he doesn't have anything to block the damage with or recover his HP from. So definitely giving Hosh some type of sustain will benefit him as far as it goes for both PvP and PvE performance. The other thing is Hosh has no real accuracy modifiers. Uh, the past few buffs that Hosh received, he got accuracy modifier on two skills, being a lot of Dominion for Succession and Ferocity for Awakening. It's nice, but due to the fact that no other skill in the kit has an accuracy modifier, makes Hosh have really low accuracy. He does have a self buff of a 9% that lasts 10 seconds. 
However, this buff tends to not even be enough for PvP due to the fact that even when you use it, you have to land the CC. And by the time you land a CC, the buff will pretty much run out. And if you use a mid combo, you're going to need to land a down smash in order to even do the combo correctly afterwards. What just means is you handicap yourself to even try to have the accuracy. And it really sucks because Hush is supposed to be an evasion class, meaning that he should have some type of evasion shred or accuracy. And he really doesn't. He struggles really hard with accuracy. Of course, DR helps with this, but overall, the class could really use some accuracy modifiers like others. I would like to see Awakening Hush be more of a skirmish that can actually find sustain like a Drac, Valk, or Guardian, realistically speaking. Or I would like him to just straight up cut the idea and just make Awakening be more like Succession and be a Assassin. Because right now, Awakening Hush has a spot where it's like, he's such a hybrid. But he doesn't do either of the aspects good. He can't really sustain in the fight, and he can't really burst someone down. Yeah, I mean, in video, hybrids generally not performance like the other ones. In video, I mean, your shapes, your edges need to be sharp. It's something. At, at one point, you need to be strong or one of the best. Then your character is shining. You can, you're just saying that, hey, my character is amazing at sustain. And there are some classes that same like Hush is it's offering many things but not offering also the best in something. That's I know the feeling. So can we get a brief summary of the good and bad things in your class? What can Hashashin offer me? What should I expect from Hashashin if I want to reroll that? Well the most Hush can offer to a new average player that wants to try out, it's the enjoyment of the class. Hush tends to be a class that is relatively fun for people. And it's something really different from other classes. It might not be the best at anything and falls short at certain things. But in my experience, that really hasn't stopped people from playing the class and enjoying it. And I know plenty of people, including myself, that have started or have continued to play BDO only because of Hosh. Due to the fact that Hosh is a really fun class. And give or take, some people don't really worry about min-maxing numbers or care about the most kills. So Hosh can still provide fun playstyle and a challenging for people, which is what really attracts certain people to the class and makes them want to play the game more because Hosh offers that challenge reward playstyle, even though it might not be the greatest. Thank you so much. So we talked about Ashashin and all the knowledge, all the information, all of the experience, all of them prices. Let's talk about BDO itself. What are your thoughts on BDO skin situation from past until now? So my view the first due to the fact that I came from console. Console got promised so many things and got done wrong at every turn they possibly could. Content was held back, half-assed events, no real interaction with the community. PA was doing a really bad job with console BDO. However, within the last year, console has seen a lot of improvement, everything from content, community, and just clarity overall. So with this in mind, moving to the PC aspect, which I'm sure most people care about is PC, I've been playing for maybe five months. However, I followed the updates and everything because I always wanted to know how to prepare for things. However, I feel like a lot of people on PC BDL tend to take things for granted. BDL has not always been the greatest, but it has seen some improvements. Lately, it's been a bit slow. However, they've been more transparent with the things they want to do. And I'm just more glad that BDO is in a good state at the moment. Maybe not exactly for end game players that don't really have much to do, but somebody that's new or you're way through the game, there is still a ton of things to do and enjoy. So I'll say BDO right now is in a really great spot. The updates have been a bit slow, but at least they're being more transparent with the certain things that they are bringing onto BDO and the changes they want to do. Thank you. What do you think that PA company does well and what it does bad about updates. Also, let's say that you are a new Mr. J. If you were in charge, what would you like to add or remove from the game? I think PA does a really good job when it comes to presenting their ideas. When they want to change something or add something to the game, they talk about it for a while with the community. This allows other people to give their thoughts as far as it goes, you know, not just players, but like content creators and stuff. That really gives you the perspective of them being inclusive with the community rather than just like full on blowing it out and just doing it and then having negative feedback. However, this does kind of bleed into the fact that they do some negative things. The main negative thing that sometimes they do is they ignore the feedback at times and will release certain things and won't even give it a second thought. 
This usually has happened in the past, but is quickly corrected, which is one of the things I like where PA will eventually listen. And it's not like it takes a long time. A couple months might go by and they'll end up fixing it, which really helps with certain aspects of the game, such as when they wanted to change the protections for every class. The community strongly said no, and they have pretty much put the idea to the side, right? It's that thing that is PA being really transparent and giving the community a voice that I really think they do great. The thing is, if I were to change something about BDO, I think PvP is what I would like to change or much rather improve. BDO's combat is like no other to me. It's one of the main reasons why I love BDO and I think BDO is such a great game. However, PvP tends to be more limited recently and doesn't really offer growth to other people due to the fact that it doesn't pay well. So it's not really a good way to improve your gear, but it's something fun. So I would like to really improve a lot on the aspect that they should give us more PvP content and not just cap content, uncap, since we really don't have any uncap content besides Skill League and a T5 Nowhere besides an open world, but open world right now is in a really rough spot. So I understand the care to the more casual player base with cap content such as AOS, but I think majority of the player base will still like to enjoy their gear and have fun. And in order to do that, you need uncapped content. But I would like to also have PvP be a good form of being profitable for people that genuinely just enjoy that due to the fact that PvP just isn't a viable option for anyone that wants to start the game or wants to improve their gear. You're not going to really make any great money and most people will end up telling you to just go grind for your gear. Thank you, thank you. What advice would you like to give to newbies, returnees, and the other players in the game? BDO can be enjoyed at many different levels. Having max gear, or playing the max class, you know, life scaling, grinding on a cool class, zipping around on a rat class. There's so many things to enjoy about BDO. So many different play styles. And one thing that I see a lot is that people get stuck in the mentality that they have to do a thing a certain way. And I'm going to go ahead and say, if you're new, if you're returning, don't let other players dictate the way you play. This is an RPG game after all. Everyone can enjoy it to their own liking, whether that is literally role playing, that is fragging out no words, that is life skilling, that is killing mobs, fishing, whatever you might enjoy. You should enjoy the game to what you want and not listen to others. Because the community can be a bit toxic at times when it comes to... Thank you. We are reaching the end of the interview. Is there anything else you would like to add before we finish? BDO is a great game. And the community around it is even better. BDO has definitely become a huge part of my life. So I'm excited to see how much more BDO can grow. And not just as far as the game goes, but also the community. As a lot of this community, guilds, guild, uh, class discords, everything... The community tends to be really nice and helpful. So it's really nice to see that side of BDO. And I'll encourage anyone that hasn't tried BDO to play BDO. And as far as my class goes, Hasashin, I encourage people to try the class. I don't think it's that hard. I think it can be a bit intimidating. The class overall is fun and people should try it. The Hosh Discord, there are people there that are more than glad to help you out, including myself. So I think people should definitely give it a try if they want to go for something different. Thank you, thank you. I mean, right now on the screen, you can see all the social links on belong to Inaros. Thank you so much, Inaros, because you gave tons of information, experiences that you gained from the game, especially with Awakening of Shashin. They were definitely priceless. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. It was a pleasure being here. Guys, please check his Twitch, YouTube, or whatever you see on the screen. Go there, ask something about Shashin. Say hi to mi amigo Inaros. You will not regret. All right, guys, do not forget. Video is just a game. Have a nice game.